So the poop attack was February 21st. This week, police arrested 37-year-old Frank Abroqua for allegedly smearing human feces on an innocent woman sitting on a bench at the 241st Street subway station in the Bronx. A lot of people are talking about this story right now in New York City. Like, for instance, the mayor, he was basically using this story as a prime example of what people are putting up with and, you know, what needs to be changed in order for people to feel, not just feel safe, but actually be safe again in New York City. The subway system and our bus system, if we don't get them right, our city won't continue to recover from COVID. The facts here are the accused. His name is Frank Abraqua, 37 years old. He's got a lengthy rap sheet. In September, he attacked a man in Crown Heights and then taking his own feces and rubbing it on a woman on February 21st. In the September incident, he was spitting on this man as he tried to beat him up. He was chasing the individual down the street as he spit on him repeatedly saying, come here, you effing Jew, I'm going to kill you. And this guy is a good three feet taller than the victim who I spoke to today. And yet he was released for the second time in two days for behavior which can only be classified as violent and bizarre and dangerous. So the charges against him were second degree aggravated harassment as a hate crime disorderly conduct and two counts of menacing, including one as a hate crime. Bail couldn't be set on any of those charges in accordance with the state's bail reform law. Basically, I went to go talk to the victim in the September incident, in the earlier incident, just to find out how he felt about this man being released without bail, released unsupervised yet again for like over the 20th time. What he said actually caught my attention because nobody has said this before, at least nobody said this before to me. And I've talked to a bunch of people who have been victims of bizarre behavior like this. He said, quote, the legislators with this bail reform, they're arming these people, these crazy people. They are the criminals, he railed. He meant the legislators. They are the criminals. He said, how many times are they going to let him walk? Until what? Until he kills someone. And he went on to talk about how, like, that seems to be the bar. They're armed. They're armed with the knowledge that nothing can stop them, that nothing's going to happen to them, that basically they've been empowered to act as antisocially and as crazy as they want. And right up until the point that they kill someone, they're basically going to be allowed to walk right back out onto the street. The law says that these crimes are not bail eligible and that these people are not going to be held. They're going to be released immediately. That's, I guess, what's changing is that the victims are starting to get the idea that this isn't the fault of the judges. This isn't the fault of the cops. They are doing their job. They are doing exactly what they're allowed to do or what they're empowered to do. But it is the laws themselves that are letting these victims down. We definitely have to follow up, go to the trial, see what happens, see if this individual is prosecuted at all. But I have seen in a few of these instances where we cover a story like this and then we don't even get to go and cover the trial because the individual is rearrested again before his trial comes up on yet another attack. We're gonna keep this guy on our radar screen and see if he actually makes it to trial or if he attacks someone else before them. Thanks for watching today. Go ahead and press that like button and please feel free to subscribe so that you don't miss any of the stories that we're covering for the New York Post.